Hey folks, Doc here. How y'all doing today? I'm off work. It's Friday. I'm off work because of the stupid corona crap. Um, some of you folks, uh, in some of the southern states especially, um, have had open restrictions and things are getting better for y'all. And for some reason, our government here in Ontario has decided that they haven't put the screws to us tight enough yet. And we're on lockdown number 274 something or other. And even though the business that I'm in, construction, has been deemed as essential, uh, it's become very, very difficult to get into places because I do a lot of residential, so, you know, folks don't want you in your house, or it's difficult to get materials. Um, the other day I needed a sheet of drywall for a problem that we ran into, and I went off to the local Home Depot, and damn it, they didn't have one sheet of drywall. Ridiculous. Anyways, enough about all that stupid crap. Anyways, I'm not here to talk about that. You can get that from everywhere else, including 400 million Facebook posts. I'm here today to shoot a video that I was not planning on shooting. That's right, I had no intention on shooting a video today, uh, probably not even this weekend. But something came along that got me really, really excited, and I cannot wait to show you what it is. Without further ado, let's whip the doors open on the old work truck here and see what I got, huh? You figure that out yet? <laughs> what is that? Let's see, shall we? All right, so minding the disaster that is my work truck, what do we have here? Well, we have a 1973 to 75-ish OMC Johnson, licensed by Curtis Wright, further licensed by Wankel, rotary engine. That's right, we got a rotary snowmobile engine right here. This beauty here that looks like nothing more than a large industrial electric motor was rated 35 horsepower at the time, I believe. And I say that because there was a 45 horsepower version as well and I honestly haven't been able to verify that this is the 35 horse variant. I don't know what to look for just yet. Apparently, when they made the 45 horsepower variant, uh, the displacement didn't change. So rotor housing, all that stuff didn't change. So I'm assuming that they did it with a combination possibly of carburation, porting, uh, the CDI system, you know, or possibly just RPM, because I think at least one of the engines actually used a, a rev limiter in the CDI system. So with that being said, uh, I was told this was a 35 horsepower variant. I can't confirm it. Uh, I'm going to assume it for now because I'd like to assume it's a 45 horsepower model, but I can't verify that either. So we're just going to stick with the low power version. Uh, still 45 horsepower uh, rated at 5,500 RPM. And there you have it, folks. Okay, so it's probably easier to turn the motor than it is to turn the camera right now. I'll get back to that. But, you know, just very basic stuff here. You know, it is a fan-cooled engine, so underneath the recoil we have a cooling fan. And, uh, you know, the shroud, and you can see where it blows out right here into the uh, fins. Thank you. Eh. <laughs> and uh, there's the exhaust pipe sticking out here, over here. And when you look inside this, I don't know if I'll get this on camera, when you look inside the exhaust pipe, it's completely mint. There's not a speck of anything in there. It's absolutely unbelievable. Flywheel of end of everything with, uh, you know, all the coils underneath. Obviously the clutch pack is missing. That's okay. I'm sure I wouldn't be using it anyways because trying to find, you know, the center distance measurement on an old sled that was barely produced is like impossible. So that's not going to happen. Uh, cooling fins on the exhaust side of the rotor housing. Spark plug up top here. I'll pull that out in a minute so you can see it. And back to the carburetor side of things. Uh, the carburetor looks absolutely mint when you look down its throat. There's external dirt on it. There's nothing inside. It looks amazing. Um, <laughs> this port here that you see that I've got a marker stuck in is very interesting. This port uh, fed the pulse pump, the fuel pump. And this port goes directly into the rotor housing on the compression side. And if I leave this unplugged, I lose compression. Um, I had a spark plug sticking in there for some of my test shots and it actually kept blowing the plug out. So I just, you know, Armstrong this marker in and it held for the testing. 
So that's kind of cool right there. Uh, the electric starter underneath and this boat CDI that I've got just mangled in here with a bunch of marrettes and stuff. And going back to picking this engine up without a CDI system that I can no longer lay hands on, although apparently I can rig one from a Johnson outboard, it occurred to me after I did a bunch of research on it that a CDI is a CDI, really, at the end of the day. And if I can find something even remotely compatible, you know, it might be worth a shot. So I pulled this off that eight horse Mariner out back. And the bonus here, of course, is that I could have this spark plug sitting here and I could be monitoring spark while I actually had it connected to this spark plug in the engine, which was a little bit of an added bonus as far as this stuff is concerned. So yeah, the whole process wasn't pretty. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I couldn't find quickly enough a wiring diagram for this Mariner eight horsepower CDI. So I kind of guessed at which wire was going to be which going in here and I was kind of guessing at which wire was going to be which out of here and it was literally twist a couple of wires together and crank the starter and check for spark and eventually and to be honest with you it only took about 10 or 15 minutes of fooling around I was quite surprised uh, eventually I got spark when I was cranking I thought that's fantastic so originally I had you know this plug out of the engine I was cranking I got spark so I got all excited and I fired some ether in there and I screwed the spark plug in and it wasn't firing. So with my test plug still sitting here, I cranked it over and I didn't have spark. So I took this plug out and I had spark and the difference was cranking speed. As I played around with it, I realized that if it cranks too slowly, I'm not getting spark. So instead of fooling around with my jumper pack, I pulled the car up to it, hooked up the booster cables and boom, she lit right off. It was beautiful. So this thing uses a relatively unique spark plug uh, it would have been a Champion UP77V surface gap. Uh, so the way that works there is that there's no side electrode as you can see. It's just the whole ring around and then the center point. And we've seen iterations of this before. Obviously the Mazda Wankel rotary engines and other similar rotary engines use a similar style of plug. And uh, I think some old two-stroke outboards as well, although I don't have a lot of experience with those as far as the unique stuff goes. But if you look at the base diameter of this plug, the thread size, compared to a standard plug, you can see that there's a difference in diameter. These plugs here are just about impossible to find. I found a new old stock one on eBay for $100 US last night. Ouch! So apparently a common thing to do is when your plug fails in one of these engines, um, you're basically drilling and re-threading the plug bung in the engine. Uh, the problem with that, of course, is that this comes incredibly close to the apex seal on the rotor. And if you're even, you know, just a, a millimeter of a thought of a tiny little gap too close, the apex seal smashes off this and things go very bad very quick. Anyways, I checked this thing out and, you know, it, it felt good rolling by hand. I wasn't feeling a lot of mechanical resistance, you know, crunchy bearings or crap built up inside the rotor housing or up against the apex seals or anything like that. There didn't seem to be enormous amounts of shaft play or too tight. Um, I was feeling compression developing as I was turning it over by hand and that got me really excited. Okay, you know, I looked up the exhaust pipe and I looked down the carburetor throat and everything that I could see told me that the story was true, that this thing was just a crate motor that got purchased. If it got test fired at all, it certainly wasn't run for long, and I was definitely excited. The downside is that there was no CDI control box or coil with it. Of course, discontinued long ago. Apparently, you can use a two-cylinder Johnson Power Pack um, outboard CDI from the early to mid 70s, and I looked around on you know on the eBay and on the Amazon, and I found them for 100 and whatever, and I can certainly do that once I make sense of all the color coding wirings coming out from under the flywheel because despite the fact that the CDI was not there the trigger coil is there uh, the charge coils are there and the alternator stator is there so the wires all come out from underneath the flywheel that's all there just the CDI was gone okay so I make sense of what wire is supposed to go to where and I can buy one of these Johnson CDI's right right but sometimes I get a little impatient so after I got the CDI working correctly and it actually developing spark under compression, uh, you know, naturally I got all excited, fired some WD-40 in it, quick shot of ether, and you know, it banged a couple of hits on crank and it went fantastic. My son came over, he lives a couple blocks away, 
and uh, just as I was, you know, setting up for a bigger test, and I fired some more oil down his throat, handed him my phone, and said, "See if you can grab this." So here is, you know, the first real test fire of this engine when I brought it home and figured out the CDI. See if we can get some posterity crap going on here. There is already oil put in it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So there's a bunch of stuff I want to do to this engine before I fire it again and before I install it on any project. Um, I'm actually going to crack the case open and have a good close look at the state of the bearings and seals and stuff like that and address anything that needs addressing. Um, even though it feels good, you know, I don't necessarily want to just roll the dice and, you know, have something happen that I didn't foresee. And I want to delete the auxiliary air valve. Um, other than that, it should be good to go. So because this kind of came up completely unplanned, spur of the moment, there it is, pull the trigger, I don't have a plan. However, you might. Throw into the comments down below what you'd like to see done with this engine. You know that I do the off-road tractors and I've done a rat rod go-kart and in the past before you know my channel became what it was I was very much into just basic DIY go-karts, yard carts, fun carts that were you know fun cart frames or home-built frames you know slap an old Tecumseh on it and just go have a good time. So now I have all this stuff available to me Yet another project, oh my god. What do you want to see me do with this 35 horsepower rotary engine? Tell me, I will be reading the comments. And until next time, take care of yourself.